mythology isn't the only vector by which we can reconstruct history. Evidence of a more temporal form exists for those whose tastes are more technical. This evidence involves the manner in which ancient civilizations rose and fell. It also involves what and how much ancient man knew and when he came to know it. Ancient man, predictably, attributed their knowledge to the teachings of the gods. To modern scholars, this explanation as to where ancient man received his knowledge of architecture, agriculture, and astronomy is largely unsatisfactory. But it appears that the ancient's explanation was no more of a cop-out than the explanations of today's university scholars, who label everything that doesn't exist within their theory as a mystery. When it comes to the more tangible forms of evidence, Exhibit A would be the ultra-accurate map of antiquity. Map making, or cartography, is far more difficult than intuition would suggest, and the days when maps were wildly inaccurate are all but forgotten. With today's satellites, cameras, and aircraft, producing an accurate map of a particular region is as easy as taking a photo. But in ancient times, without the advantage of modern technology, drawing up an accurate map of a given region was nearly impossible. The problem lied in the fact that the map maker had no way of knowing precisely where he was. This meant that determining the true distance between two points was difficult, and this resulted in a map of disproportional dimensions. Another hindrance to producing an accurate map is Earth's natural curvature. Because of paper's cost and portability, it's understandable that people would be inclined to draw maps on paper. Paper is, however, a flat two-dimensional surface whereas the Earth is a three-dimensional curve. This means that even with the best of equipment, a paper map could never properly represent the surface of the planet. For example, looking at a modern map of the globe, one will notice that Greenland, the massive, frosty island between Canada and England, will appear disproportionately large and may even compare to the continental United States in size. Greenland is not the size of the continental United States, but on a flat map of the world, the regions near the North and the South Pole appear stretched. Although there are projections that could avoid such stretching, no two-dimensional surface could ever properly imitate a three-dimensional surface. With all the complications involved with ancient map making, it is indeed curious that maps of modern accuracy existed greater than 500 years ago. The first of these wonders is the Piri Reis world map which was compiled in 1513 by the Turkish Admiral Piri Reis. The map, according to Piri Reis, was compiled from a number of pre-existing maps which he described as quite ancient. For centuries, it appeared that the Piri Reis map was terribly incorrect in its depiction of the shape and size of Antarctica. In 1949, however, a joint British and Swedish expedition set out to survey Antarctica and ascertain what the southern continent looks like below the ice. Later, in the early 1960s, it was noticed by a man named Charles Hapgood that the Piri Reis map depicted the Atlantic chunk of Antarctica, not as it is in modern times, but instead showed its profile before it was enveloped in ice. The paradox is that, according to Orthodox history, Antarctica has been frozen over for 6,000 years, at the very least. Piri Rees readily admitted that his map was in fact a compilation of pre-existing maps. So how did those previous cartographers manage to accurately describe Antarctica's true shape beneath the surface of its ice? With Antarctica having been first discovered in 1820, allegedly, why did these early map makers describe the continent of Antarctica at all? Another world map, compiled by the cartographer Arantius Phineas in 1531, not only depicts Antarctica's true form beneath the ice, but it also illustrates where particular mountain ranges and rivers would be. Stranger still is the map's incredible accuracy regarding Antarctica's location relative to the southern tips of Africa and South America. How was an accurate map of Antarctica, including her location, hinterlands, and true form beneath the surface of the ice drawn up 300 years before Antarctica was supposed to have been discovered. There are other maps that include Antarctica, aside from the Rees and Phineas maps, before the continent was first spotted. These maps too are admittedly compilations of 
far older maps. As stated earlier, making maps is no easy task. It requires surveying equipment and advanced mathematics. The bottom line is that the necessary knowledge and equipment was simply unavailable to these early cartographers. So where did the inspiration for these maps originate?